Ah, uh, so this is an interesting question. Um, let's see here. Buh, buh, buh. I was working as an IT network administrator for two years. Then I started to learn .NET from books. So my project manager picked me up onto a C-sharp project to become a manual tester. I was developing a site with other programmers where I was just a helper for a company, and it takes eight months. I understand most of the code, but 80% of it was copy, pasted, and modified from Stack Overflow. That's the question. If I have eight months of experience where I was copying and modifying code from Stack Overflow, Overflow, can I say I'm a programmer and find a job at another company? Question mark. Um, you know what it takes to be called a, uh, be called a programmer? <laughs> can you do hello world? Hello world! Woohoo! You're a programmer. Now you're a programmer that only knows how to do hello world. But hey, if they're willing to pay you hundred grand a year to do hello world, you're set, right? Uh, this is one of the big questions that comes up a lot of times. Basically, when can I be called a programmer? When can I be called a system administrator? When can I be called whatever? Um, and, and basically, you can be called it as soon as you, your hoo-hahs feel like you can be called it. When you, when you have enough confidence to say, I am a fill in the blank, uh, that's that's really all you need, right? Especially in the world of programming. So if you have eight, well, so you have two years of IT. So, so this is one thing too, especially in the tech world. Don't discount other things that are relevant. So you have uh, two years as an IT network administrator, plus eight months as a programmer doing Stack Overflow. So you have about three years experience in IT. Um, <clears throat> so I would argue, uh, yes, you can call yourself a programmer and you can go out there and you can try to find a job. Now here's the thing in life again, as I say many, 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 many times, do not lie, be careful how much you shine the turd, go out there, be honest, be reasonable, and see what people are willing to offer. One of the things you have to understand in the world of coding right now is there's something like 150,000 open positions, like that there's nobody to fill. Uh, coding has like a 2% unemployment rate. Um, um, so there are lots and lots and lots of jobs out there. And so one of the things you have to realize is from the employer standpoint, again, the employer is always going to hire their best option that's available. Now, again, a lot of people get, get this in their head and they're like, oh, well, fuck, I, I can't apply for jobs. And I mean, well, maybe I can call myself a programmer, but I'm not actually going to get hired. But remember, the best available. So me, as a boss, I put out um, help wanted ad. I get back 20 resumes. And then the only people I can hire is from those 20 resumes. <laughs> so again, if there's an MIT grad that's willing to work for 10 bucks an hour, yeah, I'm going to hire that person. What do you think the chances are there's going to be an MIT grad that's willing to work for 10 bucks an hour in the pile? No, there's just going to be a pile, right? So you got to go and they got to sort through and they got to figure out uh, what they want, what they need, so on and so forth. So especially when you're new, um, and the nice part when you want to go into programming, and the nice part, especially coming from, from system administrator to programming, is the pay rate for programming is a lot higher. So basically, you could do a lateral move. So if you're making $50,000 a year with two, two years experience, let's say, um, as a network engineer, there's a very good chance you could go over as a very low-level programmer and still make $50,000 a year. So the company looks at you as being incredibly cheap because they're paying their other programmers 60, 70, 80. So to, so to them, you're affordable. And to you, you're making the same money you were before, or maybe slightly more, uh, right? Um, and so basically what I would say is if I were you, you got that two years experience, blah, 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 I would go out there, I would start putting out the resumes, I would start talking to people, um, I would be honest, and I would see what jobs are out there and what you can actually get, right? Um, because again, you know, that, that's one of the things I, I say with a lot of these coders, uh, a, lot, a lot of these wannabe coders, and everybody wants to, I want to hand code everything. How do you know a noob? How do you know somebody that is that is going to give you a migraine when they talk about how they only hand code everything? And you're like, really? You're going to hand code 100,000 lines of code when freaking 99,000 of those lines of code have already been written by somebody else? That just doesn't even make a damn bit of sense, right? So the reality is, is kind of like with a project you're on, a lot of code is copied, pasted, modified from other places, and made to fit together. So again, if you go out there and you're you're talking, um, um, 
But with these companies, um, you may find out they're more than happy uh, to have you at that level, and then they will train you up. Because again, the big the big problem with pro with uh, getting people that want to go into programming is is do you have the brain for it? Do you have do you understand like like functions or arrays or multi level arrays? Like like trying to get most humans to like grasp the concept of a multi level array, just. <laughs> blows your brains up so so even if even if they were five years trying to learn it they just wouldn't grasp a multi-level array you just can't make them do it so if you already have that aptitude um then then they can take that and they can train you up and again in a year uh in a different environment you may be able to get to be very good the other thing you do have to realize too is a lot of these companies they have their own code bases so just like your company's using stack overflow um you may go to that company and they have a repository of all their code. So again, you know, grab some of this and you grab some of this and you grab some of this and then you connect this thing to make this thing work and you're all good. Um, so yeah, I mean, again, it all depends on where you are in the world. You know, if you're in the middle of Nebraska, it might be hard to find a job. If you're in the middle of Silicon Valley, it'll be easy, <laughs> right? Uh, but as a general rule, as a general rule, I would say it sounds like you're in a pretty decent position. You're in a pretty decent position. You got the IT experience, plus you've got the programming experience. You've been able to build the thing, so that's all good. And then, like I say, that whole copy, pasting, modifying, that's what a lot of these folks do. I mean, again, that's how, that's how these companies make just, gross amounts of money is just again as you you copy and you paste and you build this thing again you go and you you ask somebody you know is this solution worth fifty thousand dollars that's the only question is the solution worth fifty thousand dollars they say yes hopefully they say yes well you know you go out you grab a bunch of code from somewhere else you modify it and you know 20 20 40 hours to make it work and hey guess what you just made you know a thousand dollars an hour uh, that's how a lot of this stuff works. So, uh, so yeah, no, I'd, I'd say you're fine. Just go out there, you know, start schmoozing, start putting out the resumes, um, the whole nine yards. Um, again, you'll probably start at a crappy position, but again, a crappy programming position. Um, one isn't as crappy as a crappy IT position. <laughs> Uh, and two, um, you should be able to move up the ranks relatively easily if you're in a decent company. Um, so, yeah, so that would be my thought. The only thought that I thought I would have is... Um, is also possibly just try staying with your company. Again, the, the more experience you can have, I mean, like eight months, you know, eight months isn't bad, uh, plus your two years, not bad. It's not like, woo, it's not great either, right? Um, so if you can hold out, like if I were you, I would, I would try to hold out at least for that year mark, at least for that year mark. Because uh, again, a year, you know, again, it's a lot of storyline when you're getting hired. A year sounds good. Two years as an IT system administrator. One year at the same company as a programmer. You want to move on. That makes a little bit of sense. Eight months seems like a little, you're a little flighty. Not horribly. It's not like you're not going to get a job, but it's not great. Um, I would really see, like, if there's any way you could schmooze and stick around for, like, maybe two years if you don't hate the company. Because if you have two years as an IT professional, then you do two years of code. Plus, you already know all these people there. You are you know people. You have contacts. You have resources. You can schmooze. Don't discount that, right? When you go to a new company, you're gonna have to relearn everybody's names. You're gonna have to rebuild trust. There, there's a lot of stuff like when you already work for a company um, that you have that you don't really realize is that whole. It's like that institutional knowledge. You understand how the company works. You understand who the bosses are. You understand who to schmooze with. So I would argue. Probably, if I were in your shoes, um, I would really think about, at minimum, staying there a year, just so you've got a solid year. That doesn't look too bad, right? Um, but then, then if I could, probably st try to stick out like maybe like two years um, while doing self-study on the side. Um, that would probably be the best bet. But yeah. That would be the very, very long, the very, very long answer. But yeah, again, like I say, with any of this programming or whatever, um, I mean, as soon as you know how to say hello, do hello world... You can say you're a programmer. Um, again, it's all... That's why I see with so many of these people, so many of these people, like, they'll be really good. I mean, like, again, Hello World is... is yes, that's a freaking exaggeration, but there's a point to it. Um, there'll be so many people that'll be really good. They'll be, like, really good. Uh, but then for some reason, they just don't have the confidence. 
Right. They're like, oh, but I don't know. It's like, you know, they'll be, they'll know web programming. They'll know, they'll know like, you know, HTML and, uh, and, and JavaScript and PHP, but they don't know Node.js. And then they'll be like, oh, well, Eli, Eli, everybody needs now, nowadays needs to know Node. And you're like, uh, well, yeah, but I'm, I'm sure you could get hired with what you know. <laughs> no, no, no. All right. Um, so yeah, yeah, you're good. Um, yeah, eight months is fine. Like I said, I, I would try to stick out to the year, though. I would try to stick out to the year.